Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of the Raven's Voice. Uh, Tearson here, uh, and as usual, with Zealous. Hey everyone, I'm a little exhausted, but hey, I'm here. <laughs> he is the tired one this week. I'm not, because, well, I'm an old man, but I took a nice long nap before the show. So, he's asking <laughs> you, you're old, you dad, a lot. Um, okay, no, but uh, seriously, I did, so I, I'm feeling pretty energized, but... Uh, <laughs> Big show. We've actually, uh, you know, we've been looking forward to this one for a while. When it comes mm-hmm. to, when it comes to what we plan around here, and most of it doesn't doesn't work out. <laughs> um, but you know, the verdict day show. This one's uh, basically our calendar from the first episode up until now has been leading to tonight. Yep. So you know, and, and this has taken many different iterations over the last uh, several weeks as to how we were going to do this. Oh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, you know, it's come down to myself and Zealous, and we're going to just talk about Verdict Day. Uh, you know, kind of a shame, actually. Um, you know, and you know, I, I, it's been said in many of the shows. I've been really busy as of late, and uh, you know, it actually that's still continuing now a bit. But uh, you know, things have been clearing up. But I I missed the fact that uh, Moonwalker, who uh, it was probably put together one of the best pieces of uh, information leading up to mm-hmm. Verdict Day. Uh, he offered to be on the show, and I'm not totally sure if we would have been able to get him anyways because he's in the UK and it's like four or five in the morning there for him. Right. But right. we didn't we didn't notice this until like, until what twenty minutes ago. So, uh, but we're gonna see if we can try to get him on because uh, you know next week yeah. Uh, yeah. we're gonna be doing two shows. Uh, we're gonna be doing a regular weekly show, but we will be doing a show. Uh, on the uh, the twenty fourth, mm-hmm. uh, you know we're, we'll be doing a show. And we're gonna try to get uh, we're gonna try to get Chang and Cleric on there. We uh, we did talk about getting all four of us on for that, and we're gonna see if we can get Moonwalker in that as well. So uh, five people that'll be kind of crazy. I hope we can do that. But yeah, that'll be the day of. Well, you know, and actually now that I think about that, as well, that's gonna be pretty cruel because I don't think it comes out until the twenty sixth for them. Yeah, there. Yeah, there is a little bit of a delay, you know. As again, you've, <laughs> we've we've had you know. In our... Kind of a dickish move. I like that now. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I'm I'm still taken aback that we're getting this on the 24th. You know, for once, it feels so odd to have uh, the North American release, you know, ahead of uh, so many other things for once. Yeah, but so the four of us can talk about you know on that episode, we can we can all talk about how great the game is, or you know, <laughs> then Walker can just be like, you know, fuck. So, so we'll see if we can actually make that happen. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, no, but okay. So, uh, oh, I forgot to use the plugs. All right. By the way, guys. Uh, yep. He's that's right. If you want to send us an email, go ahead and send it to ravensvoiceaco at uh, gmail dot com, or go to armrecordlegacy.com, dot com. Register and become a member. We've got our dedicated forums over there, and uh, go ahead and post. And uh, we always like to hear what you guys have to say, good, bad, and different. Um, or if you just want to talk about, uh, I don't know how. How good of a cook you are, or, uh, maybe uh, maybe your favorite car, or no, don't talk about those things. Um, but we have a section for that though at the forum, so you can talk about those things there. Um, okay, let's get right into it. The, the whole show is verdict day, and we're we're gonna split this up in two different uh, sections. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, many of you may remember that I had put up a post on the ACL forums a while back, uh, asking what are you most looking forward to. Uh, so th- that was intentional. The in- and the intention for me was to go back to that post when we were going to do this show and we're going to actually discuss what people had posted up. And then we're going to spend the second half of the show talking about what you guys maybe didn't know was coming out. Uh, you know, some other cool things about the game. Uh, you know, Zealous has, uh, has been putting quite a bit of effort this week into getting the latest on what's going on. Um, but I do also want to note that uh, and while I'm sure some of this information will be coming out in the show tonight, mm-hmm. uh, Chang has put up a great post up here, a recent uh, Q&A that he's had with uh, some of the developers from Namco um, in the uh, European section. And uh, he was given an opportunity to actually get a Q&A with him, and he posted that up there. So there's some great latest information, just days coming out before Verdict Day. And uh, so you can definitely check that out, too. Good stuff, good stuff. So going along the lines of this uh, this wish list we have, you know, you were talking about this thread that was, uh, you know, put out. We we had all kinds of, uh, <laughs> you know, different different topics brought up by players, uh, what they're expecting, what they're looking forward to, um, 
you know, obviously the first thing I think that popped up uh, we ran into was that, what was it, Weapon Arms? Weapon Arms so far uh, has by far been the biggest thing that people are looking forward to. Mm-hmm. And for good reason. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we've mentioned this uh, in a couple of our previous podcasts as well. Uh, but, you know, Weapon Arms are an extremely nostalgic part of the AC series, and it's wonderful to bid them welcome again. Uh, mm-hmm. they've, they've been sorely missed. Uh, you know, the, the key factor, obviously, behind Weapon Arms was a sacrifice of your defenses to provide your AC with a huge amount of firepower. Uh, I think one of the most iconic uh, types of Weapon Arms goes back to the grenade weapon arms. I know people disagree. Some people would say, you know, the missile arms and whatnot. And there have been all types. Uh, some of you can probably remember the, the mitten, the oven mitt looking uh, weapon arms from AC2 that fired the superheated missiles and had the variable mode. But uh, nonetheless, they're back. Uh, here they are in Verdict Day, and we have all types uh, from close range melee types uh, with blades to uh, missiles, um, all kinds here. And in the description uh, to this uh, podcast, I'll be sure to post a link for those of you who did not see the uh, the video. You know, this has been on YouTube in a few other spots. Uh, uh, it's been it was taken straight from the interviews uh, with From and in, in the Depth series. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a quick scroll through the different weapon arm types, uh, just the animations in the garage of what they look like. Now we have not gotten hands on, obviously, you know, to fire these things yet. But it's really fun to check out. So if you haven't, the link will be there. You're welcome to view it. See, I see what you did there. We haven't gotten hands on with the weapon arms. There. Doho. Ho. You didn't mean that, I don't think. <laughs> no, but it's. <laughs> okay. I think you no, just found that one. <laughs> it, it's really cool because, I mean, we're, we're not only getting weapon arms, which were sorely missed in five. And in fact, in my opinion, it was the single biggest uh, reason I always thought that there would be an expansion outside of the fact that every main part, every main iteration of Armored Corps has, it, has it, at least one expansion, was the fact that. Weapon arms were just such an obvious thing to have in AC5, and they were they weren't there. So that I always knew that there there would at some point be an expansion for this game, and that was it. But what's really cool is that you're getting, you know, I, I think with the way the weapon system works, and you know, you have your shoulder weapons and swapping weapons. I, I really think it it lends to weapon arms. I think it's going to bring us a, a whole new depth to them and i so that's you know and, and in that post when i asked what you're most looking for from the verdict day that's why i had actually uh said weapon arms because I, i'm really looking forward to the depth that they will bring and uh, along with all the other new parts of course that we get with uh with an expansion and all the new weapons we'll get besides really looking forward to see how they integrate into the ac5 uh game uh that, that we have the uh, the game engine that we have totally right on and, you know, the, the grounds are there for it because uh, a lot of players, I know you you talked about it too, Tirson, uh, looking for a way to pack on just an extra punch in your AC, you know, without being maybe a tank type, you know, or strapping on a mobile laser cannon. Uh, and I think this will provide the exact way uh, to do so. Also with, uh, with just movement, you know, depending on how you have your AC tweaked out for mobility, uh, your booster settings or, or whatnot, uh, that could create for some really, really slick assaults. You know, the other thing... Uh, that was right below that. I don't know if you had any more notes on a couple of notes on weapon arms, but I, I want to point at this one. This is important too. You know the uh, the UNAC system. Um, this has been highlighted a lot, especially back in uh, Silent Line. Um, I'd argue that was probably the the first time we had a chance to uh, train AIs. You know, to get a chance to bring AIs into battles or uh, make a save. Uh, with an AI that was specced a certain way, uh, for a blader AI, for example, or one that would follow a somewhat similar pattern to something you did. Uh, but we have that in a different way here in Verdict Day with the Unax. Um, and now there are there are some little interesting tidbits about this. You know, it, apparently they can be there for you know extra conquest when you need uh, conquest missions or when you need a uh, ally you know to run along with you uh, for something. But uh, we do have a note, uh, and this was from um, I believe the Depth Four. Uh, the interview with from that Unax will not be able to be used in free battle, though. I, th- I thought that was kind of an interesting crux. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit before the show. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm going to call bullshit right here. That that sucks. You know, I'm I've always had a love hate relationship when it comes to this. I mean, we we talked about it in, pre- in previous shows. This is not the first time that From has put some kind of AI system for players to use in their games. It, they, it shows up every once in a while. And I, I really like the fact that they try this. And I like the fact yeah. that they get that kind of option. I think 
I, I think Armored Core lends itself to this, to not just build the AC, but to have some kind of tactical, uh, in, I'm trying to think of the right word, is uh, have some kind of tactical input into how it's played without actually playing it. I, it it's always kind of fit. And it really is a shame that they're going to put this in again. They're going to try this again. And from what I hear, it's actually, they're actually really good. The, the AI with these uh, units, they're supposed to be really good, but you can't use them in free battle. Mm. Definitely. So I'm pulling, and, bullshit on this. Yeah, if any, by the way, if anyone wanted some follow-up in that, I'm going to be sure to post a link to um, some of the subtitled and uh, abridged translations for... Uh, the depth for especially that specific section uh, if, if any players are interested in looking at where this was mentioned um, in the interview um, now however there there is a glimmer of hope that, yeah it does stink but there is a glimmer of hope that uh, this is strongly hinted at being patched in at some point so cross your fingers you know from the cells said that they really wanted to have that feature in as part of it you know launch obviously they're saying it's not going to but it's something that they're looking forward to patching so uh, time will tell I, I guess but I hope they do. And it, okay, you can still use them in, in Conquest and mm-hmm. uh, probably in some kind of mercenary system too. So, you know, that's cool. Okay. Um, but at the same time, that, that is a bummer. Uh, you know, especially, you know, we, we have someone, a few, a few posts into this thread saying that this is something in particular that they're looking forward to for free battle. And uh, you, it doesn't look like you're going to get it out of the box. It's a, it's a shame. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I didn't. You know, going back to weapon arms, I really didn't have a heck of a lot more to say on this. Yeah. But I mean, you, you covered most of it. We're going to be getting, you know, your big laser cannon gun arms. You're going to get your your uh, laser blade uh, gun arm or weapon arms. You're going to get, uh, uh, you know, missile weapon arms and such. It, it looks like uh, now. So you're going to get your typical fair form. Right? Are there any in particular that are really standing out to be you know unique to what we've seen in the past? You know, there was. Um... A couple notes real quick on blades. Uh, there was one I could be really mistaken, but uh, it appeared we have we have solid blades uh, that appear to be a choice, uh, dual solids, and that's awesome. I mean, you know, the the Murakumo for a lot of players was a little little underwhelming. You know, for five fun weapon, really cool tribute, really cool throwback. But uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, the power of this set of solid blades compared to the old uh, the old ones that we've had you know, just previously here. Now. As far as other uh, potentials, there was one that really, really made me smile because it so reminded me of the design of the classic GNL. <laughs> Obviously, uh, it doesn't look like it. It will be, but um, it's it's the I believe it's the cannon type, uh, you know, and it sits. It reminds me a little bit of how the Oigami uh, from in, during, during the AC4 series set behind you, except it's not hulking over the back of the head of your AC. It's just kind of folded backwards, kind of like a pipe. And I saw that pipe like design i was like oh holy cow you know but uh obviously it won't be that but um that was one that was one that caught my eye at least so i i would say actually behind weapon arms mm-hmm. probably the thing that people are looking forward to the most to um also uh, something that you would least equipped in your in your hands such uh shields yeah for sure for sure you so much around shields. Uh, when I hear shields, the first thing I think of are the extension shields uh, back during the AC3 era, specifically SL. And when people would uh, use said designs, especially with a with a heavier frame, to really, really get ridiculous uh, defenses, <laughs> shell, etc. You know, primarily shell. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how these shields are going to interact with like damage mitigation or. Right. Uh, just the different ways you can use them. You know, I know probably an immediate question a lot of players have is, you know, how are they going to interact with blades? Um, I, I think this was another thing that was discussed a bit, you know, through some of the interviews, but uh, we don't always, you know, watch those channels closely, specifically. But uh, I, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to that too. Uh, I want to say a, you know, laser blade equals hot knife through butter, but uh, who knows? Um, it'll be really interesting to see if that's just going to be a linear uh, addition to your defenses. Will it cut a percentage in some way? Uh, the timing of your deployment, does that change anything? Will you have to have a time with your deployment? Uh, remains to be seen. But... I, I do believe we are getting shields to cover all three of the defenses as well. So that's important to know. Slick. Very slick. You know, but before um, we had shields, you know, another long standing uh, item in the AC series was uh, energy shields. You know, and uh, <laughs> we saw a few de- a few designs really make heavy use of these in deployment. For, for the most part, it was a bit of a niche thing when they popped up. You know, I know uh, 
Mr. Mr. X had a design with them in uh, Jester. Also, Mr. Uh, X. Yes, he had a design specifically mapped around. It, it was it was more for fun and to check out the defenses. But uh, that was I think during Nine Breaker that he he kind of. I always, I always thought that the shields in general I always thought were really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the energy shield, the energy shields especially. But yeah, I mean they weren't they they weren't all that uh, all that productive. Yeah. They weren't all that great. I mean, you really had to build around your shield in order to really get the most out of it. Yeah. And that was kind of a shame. The, the shield, but I can understand where balancing issues would exist with them as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this works. And, you know, in, in putting what, we, what we've what we been talking about here and a couple of folks go into this about this, you know, you building a tank with these new shields, um, very interesting to see how that would work as far as uh, maybe you're using a new set of the weapon arms and yep. then you're backing that up with some shields. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder what are going to be some of our equip limits um, as well with uh, with weapon arms. And, uh, now, obviously, there's probably going to be some issues with, with hangering, of course. You don't want something completely tooled and decked out. Hey, hangers plus weapon arms, that doesn't make sense. Um, I do wonder what some of the limitations will be. Uh, because the way they seem to, uh, seem to operate is they're, they're like transformable. You know, some of the weapon arms we've had in the past, they're just static. Like, they're... they're uh, like a cannon or they're a missile type and that's just what they are but uh these conform and transform somewhat like you start off with like a set of arms where you can have the normal weapons and then they switch and convert into weapons which just for sheer aesthetics is unbelievably cool but yeah. uh, <laughs> in the in the same hand uh we'll still have to see what that's going to mean for uh weight limits what that's going to mean for uh cannons if that's even possible uh that's Something that I have not seen discussed around the community at large, um, on any forum, uh, for that matter. So, uh, we will know soon, nonetheless. If if this not mentioned in a few days, here we'll see it confirmed for ourselves. But uh, very much looking forward to seeing how these two items in particular change the game. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you have your story, and that's great. A single player, I I love the single player. I I will play through the single player before I even start working on uh, ACs for multiplayer for online. But when it comes down to it. It is all about the AC building. It is all about building your building your monster machine. Mm-hmm. And so it would be, you know, these two items in particular, weapon arms and shields, can really just change how this whole game is looked at. They can. They can. I mean, you know, speaking of story, you know, we will have a bit more to move through. I believe there's uh, 60, 60 missions uh, slated uh, as far as what we have coming up here and, you know, plenty of extras around that. So uh, probably a lot of unlocks hidden around there, a lot of, uh, you know, different parts to bring up. I do love the homage they that they began to start and uh, bring back an AC5 with the idea of hidden parts. You know, you'd go around and uh, you know pick up a certain like you know schematic or part. Uh, I, that's a great feel. You know, you'd, sometimes you'd spend ages just in a mission search. And, I know I saw that weapon uh, in this hall, or I know I read this on Game Facts, and it it's great to see that element back. Um, again, I five, so. all about that in AC5. Yeah, it's yeah. probably just I'd done that so long ago and yeah. then I never. I never did it again. I, I don't know. Probably there are probably some other players that are like this, where you want to make sure you've got all of your arsenal available to you. That's how I I will go and I I will get all my parts first. Then I'll start building stuff because it will drive me nuts to spend hours on an AC and then to find out there's a part out there that could have changed everything. It would drive me crazy. Can't blame you there at all. I mean, it, it's about having your options and having things at your disposal because inevitably that whole half of the game that you missed or ignored, there's probably a frame part or something out there you'd want. So, um, going into that too, you know, we're talking a little bit about the missions and uh, you know potential hidden parts and maps that'll be available. We, we hit we hit on this last week too, uh, but Straver and a number of others mentioned they're excited about it. You know, uh, all the new multiplayer maps we got. Uh, you know, that's a link that was dropped in the description last week. I'll put it here again. Uh, for anybody that missed it, if you want to check it out, there was an official uh, vid trailer that came out recently uh, via Namco just kind of showcasing the new maps and uh, you know, all the different terrain we have. And uh, that's that's fantastic. You know, huge, huge selection. Um, you know, all, all types of, you know, different terrain to look at from kind of subterranean areas to more open ground. And uh, that's that's going to be a blast. Let's let's hope they all live up to a solid rep. You know, yeah, I, I agree. This is uh, probably one of the bigger things coming up in this game as well. Fifty-six maps—that's mm-hmm. pretty awesome. Um, you know, you could you could have a good number of shitty ones at that point. You still have plenty of good ones. I mean, this is, I believe, 
over this is twice over like the most amount of maps we've ever seen for any of the games before so pretty pretty cool uh you know really looking forward to see where this goes but uh, more importantly i'm looking forward to seeing if this is something they continue to do in the future yeah. if they're going to be so massive with the areas that we can that we can battle in i mean you know that's that that could be a huge direction changer as far as this game whereas before like i said the most i think we we saw was 23 for nine breaker before uh this so i mean that's obviously over double that and uh, it'll be really interesting to see where they go in the future with this now that being said the video is pretty neat and there are a lot of cool areas in there i can't wait to to get into all of them yep. and, and that's part of the fun thing is that it's going to actually it would take you a while just to sit down by yourself and play through all of them and you know so i mean it, that that's just awesome that i mean we're going to be playing probably for weeks <laughs> and, and every once in a while I'll still come across the new board Oh yeah, and there's 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 nothing like you know having a chance to kind of you know fantasize about some of this on the eve of an AC. Um, I I know I'm wondering what the limits are going to be both for your horizontal bounds and then your vertical bounds. You know, uh, you know flight raw flight obviously is not a as much of a focus here um, in in AC five due to you know boost driving uh, to gain height and gain altitude. Of of course, it's I think one good thing to do for maps and some of you players might want to check that out is just to hit some of the maps uh, you find interesting and just start testing the limits, you know, to see what borders are, uh, borders are available. I think it's always great to uh, know your terrain, to know the field, and um, also to see what type of cover, you know, it was uh, it might be viable to use. So, but that's going to take ages uh, to look into, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people are going to be uh, having all kinds of posts about that. Well, and I th something that you, I think you had mentioned last week was that, mm -hmm. you know, it, um, we're we're gonna have a, a arenas. We're gonna have uh, maps again that are gonna be completely enclosed. And this is something that I don't think we had in AC5. Um, and in a lot of these maps in the past, not good. Now there's been some great ones, but for the most part, they're very restrictive, and they they really hinder one or another type of uh, AC build, which is which is okay. Mm -hmm. But you know. This was back when the, that mattered a bit more, especially the ability to fly and to, to maneuver. Um, but, you know, so we're, we're going to get enclosed maps again. And I know some people are, are weary about that. I don't blame them. But it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. Yeah, we've had a couple of enclosed uh, that have been involved in the past. You know, you could argue you know, the good old arena, you know, back in 3 and SL uh, is enclosed. It, technically it was, but you had way more than enough room uh, to move around. Uh I know my mind tends to go more to uh, some of the, the inner maps. Uh, there was one that carried over to Last Raven um, as well, and I, I know, I'm sure, certain this was in Ninebreaker 2. Uh, it was, I believe it was inside of, uh, it was either inside Mirage or the Crest Base, but it was a kind of, it was a, it had a large structure in the center, and it was a kind of blue map. Um, I remember this, yeah. Yeah, that one uh, had plenty of room, and I thought that was interesting, because it, it had a couple of tiers to it as well. Uh, it had a very very similar setup to the Another Age arena where you fought uh, Zaltuk uh, the second time. Uh, this idea of having you know kind of uh, border and a bridge around the the middle half, and then you had a full arena area in the bottom. So uh, we'll see. But again, they look huge. Some of these are absolutely just uh, cavernous, and um, I think on on one of the vids, one of them even had a, a train or so going through. So it could be fun if you if you have partially interactive environments like that. You know, that's important to note. A, a lot of the maps, you know, in Armored Core are what they are. You know, just static. Like, you know, in in four and FA, you're able to take out some buildings and blow some terrain away. But as far as the the landscape biting back at you, or not damaging your AC, but more just interacting, uh, having you know things passing by, even if it's something as simple as a train, you usually don't have that kind of movement in a map. So. We'll see. Oh, yeah. That'll be interesting. Uh, so going through the thread a little bit more, yep. um, the Stradburn posts, well, he posted several things, and we've covered most of them at this point. Mm -hmm. But in particular, he one of the things that he wants is a better story. Mm. I, really? <laughs> have we have we not learned our lesson at this point? <laughs> I, if we get a good story with an AC game, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I posted once that sometimes you get more drama when I make a peanut butter sandwich. It, <laughs> this is, uh, if it's cool, great. It's cool. Otherwise, come on. It, 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 whatever. 
Armored, Armored Core has long been a master of, of abstraction okay, when, when it comes to gaming stories. You know, there have been so many loose references and things that aren't direct or, or it'll just barely skate around the border of telling you what's happening and then the plug's cut on things. Uh, you know, l l let's face it. We've had so many loose threads on the <laughs> AC series and the AC verse that it's, uh, it just becomes kind of, you know, disemboggled after a while. And it plots have been the same. Yeah. It, and a lot, so a lot of things, you know, were reloops, you know, reboots. You know, you had AC1, you know, The Great Destruction and whatnot. And then AC3 was uh, just, it really certainly felt like a reimagining um, of the situation. You had layered and, you know, the humanity underground and whatnot. And, uh, you know, this this continues, you know, plot after plot, line after line. But, uh, you know, from apparently want to develop this, we, there's way more story missions in this one than just, you know, the original 10 that we had um, in 5. A lot more to advance through. Um, I'm hoping to see Chief again. I am very interested in the corporation, as abstract as that was. Um, their technology, what it means, how they have access to it. Uh, what they're trying to develop, specifically uh, the type of AI that they're working on, because Chief always feels like your ultimate sparring partner or something. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Um, lots of little loose ends there. Um, but I I could care less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hear you. I really could. I don't care. You know, I I don't care if they come up with a new story for every single one. I like in, in what I like is the fact that when they do redo these things, they give us some of the great scenarios that you see in in all these different games. Like yeah. you have to take on the giant MT or you have to go kill the alien bugs or you have to like, you know, you get caught in these missions where you have to, you know, you have to kill like an, an AC or two. And so all the, all the great scenarios recycle them because they're cool every time you have to do them. So I don't really care. Mm -hmm. it, it's an excuse for me to go through the game. And, but at the end of the day, the story it's like I so much of my time in Armored Core has nothing to do with the story. Right. You know, I, I'll go through it, I'll play it, and I do want to play all of it. I will do all of it. But when it's done, it's done. It's like yeah, at this point, it, it's it's something for me to laugh at sometimes. <laughs> you know, so it's like oh, so they're actually trying to say that this is responsible for this. It's like oh, that's you know, it, it, I gotta say honestly, AC Five story was. Well, it was very interesting, and the characters I, I really were a hell of a lot better. In the interaction, uh, you know, the story with the characters was a lot better than I think any of the previous games. But the story was so ridiculously vague, and, and uh, you know, you've dealt with this, like we said, we've dealt with this so many times with the AC games in the past. And I, could, I, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. All right, cool. You're going to set me up to take on something cool. And I'm sure at the end it's going to be some. Over like overly powerful and gigantic robot, <laughs> never build with my AC ever, and it's you know which is exactly what happened, and you know it's just like an AC two and an AC three and in all the other ones. Like, all right, fine, whatever. <laughs> just let better. me get my let me get my part my reward for beating this guy, and I will move on. Uh, so a few a few people have said that they want better multiplayer. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, I, you know, as far as your basic free play, I, they they really couldn't do much better. I mean, things are going to break every once in a while, but for in large part, the the servers were good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, there weren't a lot of issues. They offered a good variation of you know duels, team team battle, battle royals. Uh, you know, you pretty much there was as much of a variety as you could have asked for and expected in that regard. Um, you know, now if you're talking about if more people are going to be around and if some people did say that, you know, I'm looking yeah. forward to people, you know, more people playing and such. I mean, that's going to be great. And, you know, the, the biggest problem with the longevity of AC5 was that it was so online based, but it was so based on its conquest mode. And so that's going to be the big question. Now the conquest mode is going to be turned into world mode and it's going to be a completely different thing. Will people stick around and play long? Totally. This this highlights something key. Um, regardless of how many changes we have, no matter how cool the feature or what's added, it's going to come down to the players, you know, and the base and the foundation and the community you have to support this game going forward. You know, uh, Rackus in this very you know topic, he highlighted, hey, you know, you know what I'm looking forward to, you know, more players being around. Period. To you know, help stay and like support this, you know, more than you know a month or two, uh, just going on. I, I I couldn't agree with them more. Um, 
you know, it, in in the end, that's what's going to be there because nobody wants nobody wants to play just on a ghost free battle or whatnot in conquest. You know, it's it's going to be about keeping people engaged and keeping people active, and uh, obviously, a big part of that is going to be the content that we have coming here. So, the maps will help, and of yeah. course, you know, like we've discussed, weapon arms and shields. You know, we the the foundation of AC five, which I thought was solid for a game engine and for armor core, is really just getting expanded on, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to make it a lot better. Then you take away the fact that Conquest, which was which was the center of online play with AC5, is, is I, I can't even say it's fixed. It's different. Conquest, I, I have to say I'm very happy that From saw Conquest for what it was, yeah. garbage. And that is where they put it, and they put something else in place. And I'm glad to see that because they killed it. It may have done fine in Japan, but Japan is not their only market. And while it is the majority of their market, obviously the rest of the world makes up a huge chunk of that. And I'm glad to see that they, they threw it away. Um, and we're getting the world mode, which from what it sounds like is going to, going to be pretty good. Did you, do you want to explain how world mode is going to work a bit? Sure. World mode is, is a really interesting new feature, you know, we have here now. Um, as far as, going super in-depth on it uh, that's something we're gonna have to wait and uh, see but we do have an overview that's been released you know namco's talked about this too so uh just to throw a quick word about it here you know uh the idea and this ties directly into world mode you know the idea of verdict day is that you know players belong to uh one of three factions uh to enjoy you know multiplayer through and you know we've kind of named uh, some of these and people talked about them through forums and there's been tons of talk of who are you going to be part of etc but anyway where this comes down to is uh uh, in this world mode, uh, players uh, you con they conquer territories uh, between the three factions, and you win by by basically taking out the other two factions before uh, the whole war ends. So basically, the world is divided. It's divided in seven different areas, and at the beginning of a war, each faction owns two or three of these areas. So each of these areas is also split into eight bases. So that's where you get your uh, your 56 maps uh, to fight on. Now, there's a short caveat here that there's some weird structures called uh, the towers that exist in like the, the last points of uh, the eight bases. And um, we've seen some of this, you know, in the Verdict Day trailers and whatnot. You know, you see these huge looming structures, and I, I suppose the idea is that they're uh, rife with uh, resources and whatnot, and that's why they're being fought over uh, so intensely. That That's just part of the lore. But, uh, yeah, you know, the idea is for... Uh, uh, players to take out bases um, in each of this area, in each area in, uh, in order actually, and uh, conquer them. So every base has like an endurance figure. Uh, you can think of that as health, HP, AP, whatever you want to call it. And as you take that endurance down uh, to zero, uh, players can move on and they can conquer another base. So uh, once once uh, all those bases are lost, belonging to like a certain area, a faction will die out. So it's interesting. I guess this is that, that point, too, about this whole dynamic campaign that happens about how a player's action can affect uh, the overall vision of what's going on in the world uh, through this. And so you're going to have this constant push-pull between three forces. You know, it's almost like a different spin on uh, Kisaragi Crest Mirage. So we'll see. So I know it's a, it's a bit, bit of a mouthful to, you know, kind of chalk through, but that's... Uh, just some of the things that I looked at and some of the things I'm reading through here. And in fact, um, I'll be happy to throw a link for this too uh, in the description. Uh, this is also up in the official page uh, for AC if anyone follows that on uh, Facebook. And there's some uh, images and whatnot, uh, and a description very similar you know, to what, what we've just discussed here. And uh, way more to check out if you guys want to look at it directly. Sweet, sweet. So um, probably something that uh, that needs to be brought up as well, and we were talking about parts and such, uh, there's going to be a new tuning system. Yeah, you know, tuning is one of those things that I was thrilled to see come in Armored Core in the first place. It, 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 yeah, it put that extra C in custom. You know, it. I always enjoyed it even in its most basic form. You know, when you just had a few tunes you could add to Generator and a, a couple of tunes to, you know, your various parts or whether incre you're increasing your defenses or your accuracy. Um, some of that comes down to <laughs> what some players might call min-maxing. You know, determining what combination would be best attuned to your style, what you're trying to do. And uh, it looks like some uh, we're going to expand somewhat on that here with uh, Verdict Day. Yeah, so, uh, you know, weapon uh, weapon tuning's not going to be such a grind anymore. Um, there, there's going to be fixed final stats. 
uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit easier to handle overall. Uh, in conversion, of course, at least when it comes to the frame parts, you can change uh, things like the defenses. And, uh, you know, so I, see, I, I don't think it, it doesn't look like you can change anything else. Pretty much just defenses on that. But that's pretty cool. And that is that is honestly probably much needed. Yeah, for sure. You know, we before we, uh, especially for five, you know, being able to modify your categories, there were there were so many weapons where, you know, people would choose a power spec or whatnot. Obviously, uh, for different setups, it was a little more ideal to uh, run a different, uh, you know, tuning category as opposed to what you were trying to achieve uh, with your weapon. But that's this is always something that that needs to be expanded, uh, I think, and um, especially, namely for uh, you, you mentioned uh, the frame, I believe, right? Well, frame parts. Right, frame parts specifically. You know, it th- th- that could be viewed as minor, uh, but I, I've always felt that's huge. You know, it, traditionally in the past, you know, for messing with frames, we had um, uh, like tweaking the accuracy stat or tweaking the defenses for arms, and then when you went to legs, you'd be able to tweak load capacity a bit, and you did the same thing. You know, with the defenses, etc. Um, but usually you followed a, a similar guideline. There was like a rubric, you know, you had the, the energy drain and different things you could modify, but each part had something specific about it. Like I just said a moment ago, you know, load capacity or uh, something to that effect. So way, way more things to tweak your AC. I'm always, always for that. <laughs> the more customization, the better. All right, so you know a couple more things uh, that were mentioned in this uh, in this post, and what people are really looking forward to with uh, with verdict day. Now it's funny because this is not exactly what they wanted. I can't remember going through here. I can't remember who had brought this up, but mm-hmm. somebody said they wanted non charging laser rifles, and while I don't think that's a bad idea, um, you're not going to get it. <laughs> tough, <laughs> yeah, tough shit. You're not getting it. No, but what what you are getting, uh, what you are getting in verdict day is you are going to be able to at least hold your charge. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have to shoot it after like so many seconds. And at first, when uh, Zelson, you told me this actually earlier today, I was not aware of that. Mm-hmm. And you first told me that, I'm like, that's kind of pointless. And then I actually like gave it two seconds to think about it, and <laughs> that's actually really awesome. That's, that's, that's the opposite of pointless. That's really needed. Because the, the biggest problem with the laser rifles is that Obviously, if you if you're holding the shot, unless you really got the timing down, which you can, you can spend enough time mm-hmm. so you get the timing down. I mean, it, you know, it'll just it'll just shoot, and you know that that sucks. You know, you hear you're waiting a second or maybe two, you're trying to line your shot, and you know, then it'll just shoot. Maybe you lose a target, and you just completely lost the shot. Being able to hold yeah. that charge, I think, is a critical thing. I think that that's well needed. So while it doesn't look like we're going to be getting non-charging laser mm-hmm. rifles. You will be able to hold that shot, so uh, pretty important. At least a, a solution to the problem. It is. It's, it's kind of this is kind of interesting. Uh, free adaptation for uh, for players here, and by that, I mean giving us another way to utilize this weapon besides what's there. You know, before uh, basically, you know, I think a lot of the the foundations for beginning to learn how to control laser rifles, right? You know, you'll see this a lot in Karasawa play. Is obviously learning how to use your scan mode. It, it's a must. You know, there's going to be times when you get close to that high mark before you fire. You know, you're reaching up, you know, to eight seconds, etc. And uh, you don't want to force it if you don't have a clean bead. So you cut, you, you cut to scan mode. Um, and you know, a lot of this becomes second nature when you when you work with it a lot. You know, when to time it, when to use it, when to charge, etc. But uh, now it's a double edge. You have the option to hold your charge more, but bear in mind you will still pulls drain on your generator you know it, it will still pull so if you're using something that's really high powered you'll feel it more probably maybe not as much with the lighter laser depending on what setup you have or depending on what generator you have we'll have to see you know where energy settings are once we actually get into the game but mm-hmm. uh i i think i think that's a i think that's a really really cool feature um but it can work against you depending on what you're using if you really want to hold a charge too long so <laughs> yeah so Something else going going through the thread here. Something else that someone brought up. We're going to mention it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Self Q had said that he's very much looking to hardcore mode. Uh, and um, you know, I had actually you brought this up to me earlier today, and I had uh, I don't know if I completely forgotten or if I just hadn't realized there's going to be a hardcore mode. We're going to talk about that in the second half of the show. Mm-hmm. This this is going to get it as much time as it needs to because it's actually pretty important. Yeah, and I do big. that. Uh, in in large part, of this is not being discussed, and so it's going to be pretty neat, for sure. Uh, let's see. So you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, in, in this thread, a lot of people are 
talking about they, they want less rock, paper, scissors in their defenses. Yeah. And obviously things like shields and, and yeah. conversion of your of your stats, these things I think will go a long way to make that happen. Now, how much of a change it'll actually have, how dramatic that'll be, that remains to be seen. Yeah, it, it, it does. Um, again, what a lot of this will come down to is determining uh, – you know what, what? What designs are we going to truly call fortresses uh, come verdict day? You know, I, I think we have a pretty clear marker of uh, the types of ACs that can do that right now in five. But I, some of this is going to get turned right on its head uh, for verdict day and having to work out. You know, some of the new. I don't know if you'll have to necessarily work out too many new breakpoints, but just with the amount of new parts and the amount of new options, uh, how to truly mix and meld your defenses, and that could very well change. You know, some of the. Uh, the weight classes as well in terms of defense. So definitely, definitely looking forward to it. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I have flashbacks of uh, design uh, rare stones used. I think back all the way to ROP1 uh, when he brought in his uh, heavy biped in SL that had extension shields and uh, left arm shield. And <laughs> he could absorb solid ammo like nobody's business. And, uh, you know, I kind of doubt we'll see that, you know, in Verdict Day, just you know, and make something completely off like that, but we'll see. We'll see, because defenses are one of those real touchy things that we deal well, with. Well, and by this post, it definitely looks like some people are looking to, you know, right away, they're going to be looking to, to break defenses and yeah. <laughs> manipulate the system completely, which I think is great. You need those yeah. people. You need those people out there to let you know what can be done, what should be done. Uh, so that's great. I mean, all the nerds with their calculators, they can go do all those stats and I'll just reap the rewards of their work. <laughs> and, I mean, it's about pushing the boundaries. You know, we, we want to just thank everybody we've had out there to do some of this, uh, this hardcore research like that over the years. Uh, and specifically I'm talking about with, uh, weapon velocities, you know, we've highlighted this before, but, uh, that was a project to really get that down recorded accurately how fast each weapon was when we did not have a velocity stat listed and that was a key spot community came into play so um we don't have as many hidden stats to worry about now in the current era of ac but it's still going to be exciting to see what people craft what people come up with i think moonwalker is already a perfect example of someone who's you know worked on an independent project uh like you know gathering info uh, for verdict day and whatnot and there's by all means there's plenty of room for this stuff to blossom so well, now, and so I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah. Ellis, you did not post in this topic, so I want to know from you. <laughs> See, you can tell everyone right now, what are you most looking forward to? Quad legs, first and foremost. Every AC release, I always want to see the new quad frame parts, and I have not been disappointed so far. Even if it's just one new quad leg, I will be thrilled to see it. Very close behind that, weapon arms, hands down. Um very interested in how that's going to uh, work with uh, quad gameplay. I think Griffin had a great post on this. You know, he commented on um, uh, quad's role as far as using cannons, uh, how they're not necessarily forced to use sniper cannons, but you know how fast they can deploy them and whatnot, and how uh, this kind of plug and play, this balance is going to come in. You know, weapon arms versus cannons with quads. You know, where's the middle ground going to be? Is there not going to be one? Uh, that whole debate. So it's kind of funny. You know, that I think the two things I'm looking at kind of tie into one another. <laughs> I think uh, for myself, and I mean, I, my answer was basically everyone's answer. Yeah. I, I'm very much looking forward to how things are going to change, if it's going to change at all, in relation to weight versus booster ability. And, you know, are boosters going to get any kind of push to them at all, at least as far as how they're going to drain energy, or if they're going to be more powerful in general? You know, things are going to be less, less, you know, about wall clinging and jumping and. Uh, you know, will, will you be able to sustain your own your own weight as much with your boosters and such, and just mobility in general? Mobility has yeah. actually been something that I have struggled with in yeah. the days of five. Uh, I think while I like how they did things, while I like the system, I think I prefer the older the older uh, maneuverability with uh, with ACs and boosters and such the, of the previous games in the past. But I don't mind this, and I like it, and it feels right in this uh, in this game engine. Yep. But I think they went a little bit too far with it, and I, you know, if they lightened up on it a little mm -hmm. bit, I think they have something. For well, another topic we've hit. You know, um, this reminds me of when. Um, you know, initial, you know, momentum or, you know, the booster uh, ignition. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering that, you know, the original tuning we had for to, 
tune that stat uh, for boosters. But uh, I remember being really interested in that first came up in AC, you know, and I feel that's been really expressed to an extreme in five. You know, we we feel more momentum now more than ever with the ACs, and you know, the, your inertia behind your boosters and how. Uh, the, the push, you know, the force effect behind your movement, whether, you know, you're coming out of a glide boost, you know, whether you're pulling a, a tight maneuver uh, after a quick boost or whatnot or high boost. Um, there's th there is a lot of delicate mechanisms when it comes to that. You know, each player is going to have their own preference for it. Uh, so the mobility game is huge, um, and it just kind of leaves to question, uh, will, are we going to feel that momentum even more? We have more control over it? We're, since we're following the 5 engine, probably a lot of what we already have, but the new boosters should be very interesting. And you haven't heard really much of, if anything, about this up until this point, so that's, that's uh, part of why I think I'm so intrigued by it at this point, is like, how is this really going to work? Sure. Uh, because you know, in, in most games, they do tweak it yeah. uh, from, from one version to the next. So well, obviously, in new iterations of the game, it's almost completely redone, mm -hmm. but even from the expansion to expansion, they do tend to tweak this, if not if not the mobility of your boosters, then how they how they affect the heat of your AC, right. and if not that, then the energy drain. There's always some kind of tweaking to this, so I'm really interested to see how they do it. I, I think that's going to wrap it up for the first yeah. half. We are nowhere near finished, guys. So if you if you are not interested in the topic of what's coming out next week, then you prepare to be bored even more because the next section is still all about verdict day. Uh, there's some really big stuff that we maybe just even glanced on, but we're saving for the second half, but, uh, some really cool shit coming up. We're going to take a break right now, but, uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Hardcore mode and more after the break. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spend obviously the, just like the first half. We're gonna talk. We're gonna be talking about verdict day. We're gonna start this off though. Uh, there's a thread over at armorcorelegacy.com over in the forums. Register, become a member, and you can read this. Uh, the yeah, I, it's a, the Armory Corps verdict day final Q and A. These are questions that from Chang sent to one of the community managers over on Namco Europe. And uh, he's getting he's getting a lot of these answered, and there are some important uh, some important answers here. Now, you know, and actually, we probably should have said a little bit a little bit of a disclaimer. Although we were fairly, we, you know, we got we got specific in the first half of some stuff, but I think we were general enough to where it won't matter too much. And I yeah. think most of what we discussed in the first half are things that won't change much. But what we're about to drop on you here is some serious information, and this is subject to change, and some of this is so big that Chang is actually asking for clarification on some of these subjects. So, mm -hmm. that being said, what we're about to say could could end up being different. So, but as of right now, we've got some some pretty big stuff to drop on you, and a lot of this has to do with the online section of the game. Um, probably the biggest question to which there has been no confirmation of yet. Yeah. And uh, even talking with someone during the uh, the exhibition last weekend, um, I even made sure to ask them. You know, they, they had said uh, that there wasn't going to be a region lock or that region lock was going to be Japan and then everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard these rumors. You know, we, We've spoken with Namco a couple times. We've never been able to get this confirmed. However, Cheng does have, a, have here in the Q&A, uh, is there a region lock? And if so, what regions are locked? And the answer at this point, and again, he is getting this confirmed. He's going to make sure because this is obviously a huge deal, mm -hmm. is that right now the answer is that Verdict Day will not be region locked. Big deal. Big deal, people. And in more ways than one. You know, if unless you've been under a rock about AC5, you have clearly recognized the boundaries that have been drawn in terms of region lock. That is the EG region, JP, and A side, etc. That's the that's the trouble. Uh, we've there's been a, there's a fracture there, EG with the communities and just how things are divided. But just hypothetically, if we were able to pull players in one spot again, that would work wonders. There there wouldn't I don't know if there'd be much of a need for EU side and this side and that side, so and so on and so forth. Everybody would be in the same area. Now connection is a different story. Okay, some of this won't even entertain yet until it's confirmed but it's very a very interesting prospect you know i i i think i'm gonna err on the side of caution a little bit yeah. here yeah. It, it, most of what we've heard up until this point is that 
the Japan will have their own region, and basically the rest of the world will have another region. And I think that's a smart way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, I, if there is no region lock at all, I'm all for that. Um, you know, I don't necessarily need to talk to the person I'm killing. That's fine. <laughs> they don't need to know my language. They can just know the language of my laser rifle. That's fine. With them. So that's uh, that's all good. Um, but that's crazy. Uh, you know, I... To, to have no region lock in these games with AC5, which is in, in Verdict Day, which is as equally going to be all about the online play. Right. I mean, that's crazy. And I, I hope that's true. Right. I, I don't think that's what's going to be the case, though. Um, yeah. But that's that's the answer he got. He got that straight from Namco. And so he is confirming it because that that's pretty big. But that's what we have right now. And again, we wanted to, we wanted to say it, but we also wanted to say, we're we're not so sure that's going to actually be the case. Exactly, and so yeah, this is something that'll definitely be changing, uh, probably in the very very near future. Perhaps even by the time this is posted. So that, because I mean, for for online play, which is obviously the bulk of the game, yep. that's that is make or break. I mean, obviously we saw such we saw very strict region locks, and uh, with AC five, that made a big difference. Yeah. And so for for them to fix that or to change it is a pretty big deal. So, um, you know, another question, and most people do know this, but there's there are some specifics to this. Uh, you know, can you import your AC5 data? The answer has always been yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can take over your, your emblems, your paint scheme, the ACs, you know, you, you can bring that all over. Mm-hmm. However, what is important to note on this is that when it comes to the DLC content, to which, you know, they, they came out with a few things up front, and, like, I think some of those were kind of like, you know, Reserve your copy of Armor Core Five with the GameStop, and you get this uh, this DLC, which was like three ninety nine, which was free if you if you did it over there. Right. They came out with I think three of those at the beginning, and then they came out with uh, what was it called the, um, the the Builders Pack or something like that. Something along those lines, probably blowing this, blowing the uh, the name of that out. But yeah, it's uh, you had a pack that was released that had um, what was it like the the damage parts and the different uh, garage backgrounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome DLC. Not worth ten bucks, but an awesome DLC nonetheless. Um, that will convert, mm-hmm. but you have to do it at the start. You cannot go back once you've converted to Verdict Day. You cannot go back and get it. You have to do it right away. Um, all of your tuned parts will go back to uh, to them not being tuned at all. Mm-hmm. So that is also important. To note: you will lose all your tuning. Uh, you can down. You can export or import, however you want to put it. Uh, You can put that into your Verdict Day, the DLC, but you have to do it at start. You cannot go back. Yep. And uh, it's it's, it's nice that you don't have to worry about, I guess, reloading, you know, some of the, re-downloading, rather, some of the extras, uh, you know, that that you grabbed before and that you can just make the jump. Uh, This is one thing we never had to traditionally worry about with the AC series a whole lot. Usually the, the imports have been pretty clean. You know, in fact, uh, in our older games, uh, a lot of your emblems would hang with you. You know, all the way even back from when uh, its AC began on PS2. You know, you could go all the way back and grab some of your oldest emblems, and you could at least still get some of it, or you know, most of those things there. So, looks like they're keeping that tradition going. Uh, which is great because if you're a guy like me, you spend a lot of time on some stupid emblems. <laughs> uh, you know, if you if you played with me, you've noticed I I do have like a different emblem for each of my ACs. I have a lot of fun with that. Of course, I'm I'm an artist, so that's the that's the not you know that that's no surprise. I like I like playing with that. Um, let's see, your money will be reset, and I know for probably a lot of us that have been playing forever, we have ridiculous amount of credits. <laughs> I I stopped caring about how much money I had in Armored Core Five a long time ago. You know, usually AC reaches that saturation point, you know, whether it's through your missions or something else you've grinded. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've been grinding Exusia like crazy or whatever mission you did. Bottom line is, you're probably not even thinking about your credits at this point. So, uh, fresh start. You might have to care for a little bit, for like yeah. a day. So, <laughs> um, well, there's something really interesting here, and I, I didn't know this until recently that this was even an issue, but I kind of, you know, I like this. Mm-hmm. And again, I think this is something that Chang is getting uh, more of a confirmation on. But it does look like in some capacity there will be a cap to how many people you can have in your team. Mm. And the answer that he got uh, was that you can have no more than 10 members in your team. 
I suppose on one side you could say, well, it makes things clean if you wanted two teams with operators or if you wanted to do two sets of four and a, and a two, however you want to divide that up. But um, you know, let's face the reality of that. There are plenty of teams out there that don't have just ten members in them. Of course, likely far more. And there's going to have to be some changes uh, with how that's arranged. Or uh, I think that's something that a lot of the team communities will have to work out. You know, so there's this and there's some more questions on here that have been answered. And uh, he's getting more coming in from uh, from Namco on this. But, it, you know, it's an interesting read. It's good to keep your eye on this. Again, the post is in the general discussions over at uh, Armored Core Legacy. Um, so with that, though, I know you are really wanting to talk about one thing in particular. We, uh, we foreshadowed this in the last section. Yes, yes. And this sounds pretty cool. So I'm just – go ahead, Zos. What, what you got? Well, um did some research into it uh, because this is a feature that, you know, I, I heard about earlier on, but I, you know, really hadn't looked into uh, much further, but really wanted just to firm some things up uh, for this week, not just for the sake of the podcast, but obviously we're on the eve of uh, Verdict Day. Uh, this is super exciting. We discussed a hardcore mode uh, in our first segment uh, before we transition over here, and this will be a live mode in Verdict Day. Now, what this mode is, when you complete the... Uh, the main 60 missions, and you've done your your original clear. Uh, there's a mode that opens called Hardcore Mode, and what's interesting about this, it's a completely separate save from your normal save. And in this save, and in this mode, as you're playing it, you the, the amount of damage that your AC receives increases, the price for repairs and ammo goes up, and overall the game is more challenging. So you can probably expect harder AIs, um, things like that. Also, it's very, very, very important to note that victory conditions uh, change too. So your very mission parameters could be shifted. Um, I'm blown out of the water excited for this for a number of reasons. I see this as an evolution of a system that we had presented to us uh, in AC4 and 4A uh, with hard mode for missions. If some of you remember, um, such as the mission in uh, AC4 with... Uh, not Arteria Carpals, that, that's, uh, that's in 4A. But in 4 when you took on uh, Berlioz on his team, you came in on hard mode, everyone was wiped out already. Noblesse Oblige was down, and his partner knew it was just you against 4. Uh, drastic differences, you know, in hard mode, right? And uh, here we have an evolution of that uh, with Verdict Day. You know, um, first, not only having a completely different save, but let's face it, a lot of AC players are down. <laughs> Right, masochistic with this kind of thing, and, and a chance for us to really put ourselves through the grinder and test uh, in a different mode uh, against you know what our how our AC can hold up or different strats. I think is going to be a blast. Uh, also, also a mode where credits can matter. Uh, like we were saying, you know, they're just usually reaches a point in AC where your credits are so high you don't tend to think about them. I'm you know except for the beginning, but here it may well uh, be more of an issue. You know. Uh, this idea too with uh the the conditions you know for your mission ending changing too uh there's so many sadistic things that can happen with that we saw mission requests creep in um around ac3 roughly you know extra mission parameters if you just wanted extra pay uh to finish up a mission and that was optional at that point that was the gentle way of introducing things and they progressively you know made some of that more more difficult but um you know, it's great. This is again, it's a, it's a separate mode that you'll have a, a separate save for to work on, and I will be very, very interested to hear how people are dealing with this, how people run their uh, clears, what what the posts are going to be on in the discussions, how people uh, progress through this, and how hard it actually is. Will it live up to the challenge? Will it live up to the hype? Um, that remains to be seen. Uh, I think AC players have shown that most of the obstacles, you know, they've overcome. Uh, whether that's the final Zenida. Uh, and, uh, from LR, the Super Archangel Pulverizer, you know, massive MTs, you name it. Uh, we've overcome it, but we'll see what this one brings. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I just I have to laugh at the, at the name of a, what would you say, a, a Super something Archangel Pulverizer? What was that? I think the Super Archangel Pulverizer from LR. Super Archangel Pulverizer. <laughs> <laughs> I just, when, when I know. You, uh, Super Archangel Pulverizer. out to you know, if uh, some of you had a different name for that, feel free to look into it. I, that that one always just uh, sticks out in my mind, especially for LR. You know, it was the uh, the hidden boss after you cleared uh, all the other missions in LR. You know, once you got your S ranks and whatnot, there that boss battle appeared. And, I am uh, stealing that name. <laughs> go for it. Use it on an AC. Um, but uh, see, now it's stuck. But the you know AC has constantly shown that. 
uh, it's no stranger to uh, really just out of this world <laughs> nutty boss fights. And whether that's Nine Ball Seraph, uh, what we saw from uh, Chief, you know, monolithic uh, MTs, you, know, you name it. There's always some fun challenge to kind of gawk about or gawk over. Uh, so this will this will be really cool. And I know this is probably something I I'll jump right into after the uh, the main run, the main campaign. Super Archangel Pulver has that's so awesome. You know, you know, talking about hard hardcore mode though. Um, you know, I, I don't really have much to say on this. I, I'm really excited for it, but this is one of those things where I really want to get my hands on it before I say too much. I mean, this, this could yeah. really add on to end game for our record. And yeah. They've done they've tried doing things like this in the past, but at the end of the day it really just comes down to building your AC and such. But if this is something if this is like some a possibility of some sustainable end game for uh, for Armored Core that could actually take a while. We're actually going to have to care about credits. You're really going to have to care about what kind of AC you go into a mission with, because most of the time it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it, this is this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, you know, if it ends up being what it could be, at least halfway, uh, it's going to be pretty neat. Um, so, no, yeah. great! I, I can't I can't wait to get my hands on it. For sure. Um... You know, another thing uh, that should be specifically noted about this is it, the fact that it won't just use a separate memory bank for, uh, you know, your, your normal save, but it'll save separately from, uh, you know, your world mode, too. And we discussed that a little bit in the first half, you know, with uh, uh, with your main campaign. Uh, but you have this idea of, uh, of an end game for AC. You know, traditionally the end game has been, well, obviously, you know, the verses. You know, you grab your parts and whatnot, and now you go, you know, and engage, especially now that we have this online environment, you know, to, to do so in. But to add uh, some extra single player uh, to things, I think some people might have fun with that. You know, when when they're not, uh, you know, off doing like a conquest or whatnot, or if they're not doing something team team specific, it could be engaging possibly. And, and Tyrus and I think you're right to approach that uh, with an air of caution. Uh, for all we know, we could have people just destroy this, you know, blow through it, or it could be something that genuinely proves a challenge. And we're gonna find that out in a few days from now. So. Just a few days. So, was there anything else uh, in particular that you wanted to wanted to hit on? Yeah. Um. Just to, there's a couple of light points too that have been uh, mentioned here, and some of you, you know, whether you've uh, been watching some of the releases from From or done some digging, you'll know about a few of these. But I, I do want to talk about them. Um. Uh, it has been confirmed that there will be new over weapons. You know, we we kind of joked and jested about this that you know, of course, we'll see over weapons. That's obvious. But from from confirmed it. Um and number uh, the interviews, especially during the depth in uh, the releases that they've had. Um, there's also a couple of fun little points here about extras and uh, uh, Easter eggs. And I, I want to highlight this extra because we're on the online topic. Now, I don't know if if we're going to get this unilaterally or equally, but um, in the depth four, there was uh, talk about a uh, downloadable uh, UNAC each month. Uh, and this will be called monthly UNAC. And essentially what this is from what, what we can understand right now is uh, downloadable AI, uh, especially when it comes out each month that you can download, check out, and I suppose play against. Uh, they were dem uh, from demoed this uh, in the depth by having uh, a UNAC, I suppose, composed by uh, the producer uh, from and whatnot, and uh, just out in the training yard being able to play against it. This could be fun. It could be interesting, but uh, there aren't details on how this is going to be implemented yet precisely in uh you know ex the exact parameters behind it but uh knowing that it's out there could could very well be pretty cool especially just having a fresh ai every time you look up it's going to come down to when they actually fix it if they fix it if you can use unix in free battle that's that's the kicker that's the kicker you know um it's it's good to know that again this is a feature that they really 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 wanted in um upon release but like we said earlier it won't be uh, chance of it being patched, cross your fingers, who knows. But, right. uh, hopefully, I hope so. Hopefully, hopefully, you know. It, again, I think back to, you know, SL and uh, what we got to do with the, the AIs there, uh, being able just to grab a memory card and say, hey, check this out, and throw it into a four-way battle or something people were doing. It was great. It was great. I remember, uh, I think uh, Harlequin did that, the end of MM2 or MM3. He had that insane Blader AI. We were just messing around and... Uh, you know, oh my uh, God, I remember you know, that. Yeah, yes. the thing was a nightmare. It was a, it was a blading quad. It was very impressive. So, uh, hoping this does get patched. Hoping we can see Unax for uh, free battle. Uh, another. This is a smaller note here in the middle of this thread, but uh, this is just for fluff's sake. I don't know. Some of you 
data miners, whatever we'd like to call you. Or if you just really want an eye for detail and you want to check this out, you're welcome to. But this is just an interesting little Easter egg that kind of popped up. Uh, the distorted Roman numeral uh, for five that we have behind the, the main verdict day title. If you look at it closely, you'll notice it seems uh, that there's either a small series of numbers or a font at work. Well, apparently uh, that contains the prologue and some background for verdict day in excruciatingly, excruciatingly small font. So if some of you want to delve into this with magnifying glasses, if you really want to dig into it, check it out. Uh, if Make a post about it or email us. We'd love to hear about it. But uh, I found that kind of funny. You know, We were just talking about the story uh, for AC earlier. <laughs> what <a> way... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But what a way to wrap a story no, in the title. There's no story. They're, they're all oh. like that. Oh, man. But that was that was just a kind of funny, uh, uh, I guess, Easter egg that that popped up. So there's there's no story. There's only excuses for a small amount of time. <laughs> that's all it is. That's that's it. Yeah, the, um, you know, or or you can. And I noticed on the uh, the Armor Corps Facebook page, they actually yeah. uh, they actually posted the prologue on uh, on there recently, so you can read it there if you don't want to hurt your eyes. Another spot to read. There you go. Not having to get out reading glasses. Speaking of reading, uh, there was another feature that uh, from us discussed called a uh, a manual uh, category, and it's, it stands a little different. You know, let's let's frame this right first. You know, most of the latest AC games you have when you begin, there's a semi tutorial mode. In the in five, it was you know your beginning mission as you open. Uh, just a short walkthrough about the controls and whatnot. Um, there is a uh, apparently a manual category that is just called manual. That's selectable from a lot of different places, not just your garage or just your world map. Um, but apparently it offers just uh, an expanded explanation on different aspects of the game, uh, different uh, parts that could be lore, that could be something specific design-wise. But um, apparently it will display relevant info depending on where you select this feature from. So again, not all the details are there on that. From, from what we understand, uh, from where you access it, it could very well bring up some more detailed notes about designs it could bring up something about lore and we had we've had ideas like this you know throughout all of ac you know i just mentioned the point about tutorials in the past we had mail okay that, that kind of kept you informed of the world situation but we don't we don't have a mailbox in you know five obviously and i'm assuming we're not going to have one this time too so i i kind of look at this as a uh, a way to roll mail and expanded like tutorial sections into one uh, we'll have to see how it actually works when we open it, but um, it's in it's interesting that there's going to be a resource to refer to, and uh, who knows, there might even be something for the vets out there to check out. Now, not to be contradictory, but I think there is actually some small amount of mail system in, in AC5 that would like inform you when new parts opened, or like the territory got attacked, and um, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it was really very irrelevant. No, no, so. I, I, yeah, I hear you. I mean, I, I mean, relevant that you bring that up, too. Uh, if anything, that system felt more like uh, like notifications. Uh, right. that, that's something that came over that you'd unlocked, whatever. You had just a small pop up about it. I mean, and it's also important to note, you know, there was a spot you could do expanded views, such in the garage. If you press select, you can get more uh, info on various parts you have or different things that are sitting there. But it looks like that's all going to be rolled into uh, a broader section here. So, yeah, don't don't mind me on that. I'm just kind of being an asshole. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Um, you're good. I don't think that was cool. Uh, you know, back in my WoW days, they came out with something like this in WoW as well. You would, uh, depending on where you were, you could look at, you know, the, the boss. You'd look at some stuff. You'd look at the loot they would drop. They tell you a little bit about the area that you're in and stuff. So that, I mean, that sounds neat. Uh, you know, things like that are are good. Maybe I'll change my tune on the whole story thing with the uh, yeah. day. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> probably not probably not you know as well but uh I, I think one of the uh conclusive uh points within this too is about uh part part sorting now we've always had the ability to sort uh, in some we usually have you know in some fashion or another whether the way you wanted your garage to display um and whatnot but uh they've also in in detail uh in a number of interviews from as discussed uh the, the sorting feature, you know, and the parameters that they kind of work to refine this a little bit more or be a little specific. This is one of those nebulous points, again, that we don't have full details on, but um, there's been discussion about sorting parameters like via tune statistics for your parts. 
you know, like that could be, for example, uh, if you're looking through a weapon category, you want to list by your highest power tunes. That could be a way to do it. Uh, another feature we'll have to get hands on to see the exact uh, features behind. Uh, so it's been a real pleasure to watch this be uh, played, to kind of watch some behind the scenes view of things and some uh, questions from the JP community come out and uh, also to have just some people to work to help us translate some of these things and, you know, get subtitles to a few of the, uh, the depth vids. You know, I want to thank a uh, user with a funny name here on YouTube, uh, SmileyT1. Uh, he had a number of submissions, um, a mech fan in general, but uh, submissions for AC that had extra subs, you know, for the depth and some of the other things here uh, that we had plugged in to help us get a view of it. So Almost as good as uh, Super Archangel Pulver. As well. Almost. Okay, so let's see. I think we we've hit most of it yeah. here, haven't we? We have. Uh, let's see. The, definitely one thing that hasn't come up. Uh, we're going to be able to take screenshots. Uh, yes. and, well, and I, I further onto that is that um, the ability to watch matches once you you've died uh, in a battle royal or in a team match uh, that is going to be changed. We have brought that up in the past, but we yep. haven't brought it up yet tonight. They are fixing that. Thank. <laughs> God, <laughs> the novelty of flying around on your little hover pack on your dude, uh, that ends real quick, especially when you have to spend most of that match looking for the action. And it's just, thank God they're fixing this. I mean, if that's still in there, that's cool, but give us options. Please do. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, you're gonna be able to, yeah, you're, you're going to be able to take screenshots while you're playing. Um, not really sure how that's going to work, but I heard something about how, like, maybe they'll highlight some screenshots and such. And uh, so, you know, that'll be neat. That'll, that'll be fun. Um, God, I hope we don't leave it on that. I'll give us something else here, Zell. We can't leave it on screenshots. We have to talk. <laughs> yeah, you don't want it left there. Um, Anywhere but there. Sure, no problem. Um, I don't know if we're going to get these ourselves uh, about the, the voice packs. Um, there seemed to be a hint um, about this, again, during some of like the, the depth reviews. Uh, there was a... If, if, you, if some of you have listened especially or watched some of the vids of JP gameplay, and we have them too, you know, different computer system voices and whatnot, but they're more animated on um, JP side. You have a, the male and female voice that are very happy, a little too excited if you ask me, and then you have, you know, the more serious melancholy tones. But there have been uh, a couple of releases, or some notes um, about that, and they had uh, one, I suppose, computer voice that sounded nearly identical to Chief, and they might be expanding on that. Again, just for fluff's sake. You know, I but... pay ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money if they can get me the guy who did the voiceover for that old Silent Live commercial. Oh, you know what? Be rich. Can you link that? Can you link that for uh, for the show? Yeah, yeah. I'll see. I'll see if I can find oh that. Oh my god, that is the most ridiculous. Oh, I could I could spend just forever just laughing at that. If they could get that guy <laughs> to do a male Japanese, you know, speaking English, um, new set of voice uh, for for the oh my, god. I'd be done. I'd be done. I'd never need another voice again. That is so hilariously bad. Oh, I, I think it's smooth. I think it's really smooth. <laughs> you got, uh, you know, the other one that comes to mind, since I'm, I'm thinking about the English voices now that we had introduced it, you know, uh, Nexus, the opening Nexus, Armored Core, you know. Oh, the, God, that guy. That, yeah. That, yeah. that was okay. But no, I mean, talking about this, so if they could actually get some some classic ones, that would be great. Yeah, that would be for sure. Cool. Uh, but seriously, I want this. I want the silent line guy. You have to link that because it is the funniest. I'll, crap. I'll have to. I'll have to dig that one up. It can be that it's a great nostalgic, uh, great commercial that we obviously never got to see. It was on, which was weird because it, you know he he speaks in English, but it's. I think that was the Japanese only commercial. Yeah, you know, we had a couple like that. We didn't get uh, AC3. Uh, Vanilla had an excellent commercial to it. Uh, it started with, uh, you know, our uh, the the Crest AC. I think they called him Surf Surfire in LR. He uh, basically just slashes through the screen with a blade, and then explosion goes off. The rest of the AC3 trailer, super brief, you know, right to it. But it was pretty slick, you know, for a commercial. And again, it was you know one that we we didn't get on this side of the shore. A possible voiceover. So I think uh, you know, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, uh, Diamond Core birthday, new story and missions, uh, over 100 new cards, uh, weapon arms and shields included in that, mm -hmm. 56 new maps, uh, revamp tuning, uh, you know, the conquest is gone, world mode is, uh, is mm -hmm. brought in, 
Uh, oh, something we didn't talk about uh, mm-hmm. going through my list here: uh, player, in-game player, and team medals, uh, which you know some people really uh, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure hard, the hardcore mode will have a lot to do with that as well. Um, so I, you know, pretty much everything that you want in uh, in a new expansion. This actually seems probably to be one of the biggest expansions that they've done for an Armored Core game. It's it's promising. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, in AC expansions, you can always expect uh, some new parts and some new missions and whatnot. But, you know, ironically, we never we tend not to look too far beyond that. You know, some mechanic changes. You know, more energy here. You know, less heat there and whatnot. But there's a it's a number of features being added. You know, real tweaks to gameplay, real tweaks to the online, the changing of the system and whatnot. And it's it's shaping up well. So, uh, again, if you guys want to keep up with some of this uh, and read it, there will be a number of links this week. Um, also, uh, I'll be sure to post, uh, there was a couple of backup articles, like I think on Silicon Era had posted about uh, Hardcore Mode. They, they had spoke about it there about a month, a month or so back, I think, and uh, I'll be sure to put that link for it if you guys wanted to see it. I think that'll do it. Uh, you know, at this point, you'll hear from us again. Uh, in about half a week from now, you hear from us Tuesday night. We're gonna, we're gonna record a show. Yep. We're gonna get it up that night. Uh, normally, we'll we'll spend a little bit more a little bit more time and care into getting these shows up. Make sure the levels are right. Uh, there will be no edits. It'll just be, we're gonna we're gonna put it. We're gonna record it. We're gonna put it in the camera. We're gonna put it out. So if it's horrible, blame me because I'm not gonna let Zealous put too much time into editing. <laughs> I want to record it. And I want it out. Uh, then I want to give you guys the the best thing that we have at this moment to, to live coverage on that, which is to record it and get out the door. Um, and then, you know, we'll have our usual show next week and we'll, uh, we'll analyze verdict day a bit. And uh, I'm sure we'll piss off half the community and they'll tell us that we got it all wrong. But you know, that's what we do here. So, <laughs> all right. What's, uh, anything else you want to cover? Uh, else, or should I do the plugs and get us out of here? Uh, that'll, that'll do it. You know, hit the plug, send us on out. Can't wait to see you guys online. Go out and grab Verdict Day if you not reserved it. It is right around the corner, and looking forward to seeing you guys there. All right, so with that, if you want to send us an email, uh, that is ravensvoiceacl at gmail.com, or go to armorcorelegacy.com. Uh, I have been working and putting a lot of work into actually finishing, finishing up the website portion con- content of that. That should be out Hopefully, some of that will be out this weekend. I don't see how it doesn't get out this weekend, but mm-hmm. not all of it, but most of it. So that'll be out soon. So armorcorelegacy.com, the forums are up. Go ahead and sign up. At this point, uh, you know, I, I think maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't really care. I say a lot of things I shouldn't. So, but I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say this. I think it is by far the the uh, has the most traffic right now. Mm-hmm. ACL uh, legacy forum section. Uh, you know, not a lot of not a lot of trolling, not a lot of garbage going on over there. Just a lot of people talking about uh, one of their favorite games, if not their favorite game. So, mm-hmm. um, all right, that's going to do it then. We we are out of here. I hope you guys uh, liked our review. Of what's to come, and uh, hopefully, very day doesn't suck. <laughs> and if it does, we will tell you. Here's hoping. Here's hoping, people. So, hey, hopefully this is, uh, some of this info is, you know, things you guys haven't had a chance to go over yet. Read up, uh, study up, play AC5 a bit more if you if you just want to squeeze those last few hours out of it. And we will catch you very soon on Verdict Day. All right. Next week. See you later. Peace. Take care, people.